welcome to Friday. I'm sorry for the background noise. My husband is blaring Dune. He's watching it for like the third time, but whatever. It's fine. If you like the content, please engage with it by liking or subscribing to the channel. I hope you guys enjoy your weekend as I start my work week. In June of 2017, a faulty refrigerator started a fire on the fourth story of the Grenfell Tower. The fire would spread quickly and burn for a total of 60 hours before being finally put out. Not only would hundreds of people lose their homes, and countless others would wear psychological scars likely for the remainder of their lives, in total, 78 people died, making this the most costly residential fire London had seen since World War II. This would somehow become even more heartbreaking when it became clear that there had been warnings for years, specifically about the building's outside cladding, all regarding fire danger. With a blog ran by some of the Grenfell residents hauntingly posting in 2016 that something terrible was going to have to happen to get local residential authorities to pay attention. There were also questions about how the local fire brigade handled the situation, and questions if things might have been handled differently had the majority of the residents been white. Prince William and the Queen both visited the site in the aftermath of the tragedy, and multiple charities and programs were started for the victims of the fire. While engaged to Prince Harry, Meghan started privately visiting the Hub Community Kitchen in January of 2018, with her first major project as a working member of the royal family being writing the foreword to a cookbook in the hopes that it would sell enough copies to allow the kitchen to be open seven days a week. Well, it did. Raising over a quarter of a million dollars and hitting the New York Times bestseller list, the cookbook exceeded goals. Meghan was able to show what a working royal could do using her celebrity to draw attention to a cause she cares about. Months of work behind the scenes led to a finished project, which allowed a charity to grow. Photos from engagements showed a warmth between Meghan and members of a community that the royal family had difficulty reaching. This should have been a win for everyone involved. But, of course, it wasn't. The royal family and the press that covers them were not content to enjoy their newest member having a completed project met with acclaim. Our good friend Camilla Tomini would be the first to take a shot, with the Telegraph reporting that the community kitchen was, quote, linked with terrorists. UK tabloids were happy to reinforce that not only was this a community kitchen, but it was a community kitchen located at the Al Manar Mosque. Dog whistles are fun, and I, I don't even know if this could be considered a dog whistle, considering it's so blatant. Again, the family had a win right on its lap. A member of the family working, showing a completed project that exceeded goals, and supporting a community that the family was not historically kind to. But they couldn't see it for the win that it was because of comparisons. Comparisons that were not kind to certain members of the family. The press gleefully playing along. How could they celebrate Megan's achievement, or the achievement of these women who were working so hard for their community, when certain members higher up in the hierarchy of the family hadn't had a successful project in the 10 years they had been married into the family? How could they celebrate the obvious closeness and a bond a member of the royal family had with the community when there were grumbles about engagement lengths and poor small chalk? Chalk? Talk. Poor small talk about the future future heirs. Theodore Roosevelt once said that comparison is the thief of joy. In this case, comparison not only was a thief, but it led to attack. An attack led by the royal family, supported by their own personal press corps. Because of their place in the hierarchy, Harry and Meghan were never going to be allowed to do well, even when arguably they were doing well. Megan had started meeting with the Hub Community Kitchen women in 2018 before her wedding, and importantly, before their Oceana tour, which is when many of us believe that the royal family really decided that it was going to bring Harry and Megan down a notch. I would imagine the realization, Harry and mostly Megan, since Harry had been in the system, that no matter how hard they worked, no matter what kind of completed projects they had, the press would continue attacking them as long as their in-laws didn't have the same success. The rest of Harry and Meghan's lives would have been spent 
paying for the sins of other family members. And I think in the year 2021, to honestly believe that two adults should be happy with that says much more about you than it does about Harry and Meghan.